Well, good morning and welcome to the holiday mood of the Citizens Advisory Board. Everybody seems to be in good spirits today. Amanda, do you agree that we have a quorum? We, we have a quorum. So then let's call the meeting to order. You have been furnished with copies uh, or with a copy of the minutes of our November 16th meeting. Are there additions or corrections? I had a, a small amendment. Pardon me? I had a small amendment on the minutes all right so maybe i can move it with an amendment or something but uh there's an item that shows me is absent for item number 11. yes um i was here for that but i left after that item so all right okay so can i can I move with with that be amendment amendment to be changed can you do that lisa all right and mark you had a question yes i uh no i guess i read the minutes wrong no i don't i don't have a question all right thank you i'll second all right the, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes as amended with Nathaniel's comment. Am I doing that right, Amanda? Is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. They are, they are adopted. That brings us to item number three on the, on the agenda, our very pleasant expenditure and income report, David. Yes, sir. You have in your packet the MAPS 3 revenue and expenditure report for the period ending November 30th, 2017. On the revenue side for the month, we have $9,047,250. Fiscal year, $47,218,327 in total uh, program revenue of $794,326,721. Uh, so you can see that that does exceed the $777,000,000. On the expenditure side for the month, three million eight hundred twenty-eight thousand three hundred forty-seven. Fiscal year, thirty-four million one hundred five thousand seven hundred sixty-one, and total expenditures of three hundred fifty million eight hundred twenty-four thousand eighty-seven dollars. Then you also have the obligations, uh, budget and obligations report, and I uh, will try to answer any questions that you have. Okay, Michael Adams, you have examined this. What what I what say you? Move that we accept the report. Is, is there a second? Further discussion? <coughs> then we are ready to vote on the, the receipt of the expenditure and revenue report. Any questions, Kim? <laughs> that's, that's a question for David. Roped off. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The reports are received. David, that brings us to item four. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item four is recommend joint resolution approving agreement between the City of Oklahoma City, the Oklahoma City Water Utilities Trust, and the Oklahoma City Urban Renewal Authority for wastewater main relocations and expansion for the MAPS 3 Convention Center Project M3 C009, SC 1015, and WC 0938. These next two items have to do with the sanitary sewer that is near the convention center. <clears throat> with the convention center, we had planned on relocating and rebuilding a sanitary sewer along 4th Street. Now that the Omni Hotel is going in that block north of the convention center, there's a sanitary sewer that was going right through that block that they needed to relocate. They were planning on relocating and connecting to the line that, that we were going to relocate. 
And then with all this new usage, <clears throat> the system downstream from there is undersized, so that all has to get replaced. The reason we're moving this up is because the sewer line for the hotel needs to be done before mid-year next year. So we're breaking this out as a separate uh, project. And you'll see it within your, your documents there of how it's going to be split out and who pays for what. But we've uh, negotiated a, an agreement with Utilities Trust and Urban Renewal on um, participating with this relocation of the sewer line. So as I said, because of timing, we want to go ahead and do the sewer line that would have been done in the, the convention center project and then also work on the outfall from there out. So this first item is that agreement between those bodies. Are there questions for David? <clears throat> it's been moved and seconded that we approve the agreement as, uh, as described in item four. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The resolution is approved. Item 5, David. Uh, item 5 is recommend joint resolution approving final plans and specifications, wastewater main relocations and expansions, and authorizing the city clerk to advertise for bids project M3-C009SC-1015 and WC-0938. So this is the actual final plans uh, for that. and. Uh, with this uh, approval at this body, it will go on to council and be advertised, and they'll begin construction in, in about 45 days. Been moved and seconded that we approve the resolution. Are there questions or further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The resolution is approved. Item 6, David. <clears throat> Item 6 is recommend resolution waiving consultant selection procedures and approving engineering services contract with Smith Roberts Baldeschweiler, LLC, MAPS 3 South Robinson Avenue Reconstruction, $160,400, project M3-C010. This is for engineering work on Robinson Avenue. If you recall, <clears throat> as we went through design of the convention center, we needed the roundabout that will uh, is proposed at, at 7th Street in order to get turned around and, and access the convention center. We engaged Smith Roberts Baldeschweiler through a city annual contract to do the preliminary work on that. And they've come up with, with uh, solutions on how to do that. Now we need to move that on into final plans. And we feel like it's best that the same group go ahead and do the full-on engineering that did the, the uh, preliminary work on the conceptual of it. Um, this will be split between the convention center and the park. Questions for David? It's been moved and seconded that we approve the resolution. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It is adopted. <laughs> Item 7, David. Uh, item 7 is recommend resolution approving final plans and specifications, maps 3, upper park lake lining, and authorizing the city clerk to advertise for bids, project M3-P. 006B. As we went along with the design of the park, we were made aware by uh, the city's planning department they were able to get some Brownfields grant, a Brownfields grant, um, to help with some of the, the construction in the park. So we pulled this part out of the park so that we could use that grant to pay for this liner, and it is being done as a separate project. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the resolution. David, so is, is this, you said this. Is, is coming out of some other grant money or coming out of our money? The, the construction money is coming out of Brownfield's grant through planning. Okay. And the 600000 that's on here is MAPS money or <clears throat> the grant money? The construction estimate? Uh, well, it's an estimate. That will be the Brownfield's money that will be so this used. is really isn't even going to use MAPS money? The, the, um, For this piece of it? 80-20. Okay, yeah, it's an 80-20 okay. match on that. Okay, thank you. So we're getting the lining for 20% of our investment. Yes, sir. That seems like good news. All right, it's been moved and seconded that we approve this item. Is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It is approved. Item 8, David. Uh, item 8 is recommend resolution approving change order number 11, MAPS 3 Senior Health and Wellness Center number 2, increase of $1,807. Project M3-H003. <clears throat> there are two items on this change order. This project is very near completion. 
We have a garbage disposal switch that had to be relocated and some cafe counter modifications. This comes with the uh, approval from the subcommittee. All right, this is item eight, uh, an increase of $1,807. Is there further discussion? Been moved and seconded, and it comes with the approval of the subcommittee. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It is approved. Item 9, David. <clears throat> Item 9 is to recommend resolution authorizing purchase of fitness equipment, MAPS 3 Senior Health and Wellness Center number 2, not to exceed $50,000 project N3 H003. Uh, you were handed out this morning this, this sheet here. Yes. <clears throat> that lists the equipment. This is authorization to purchase exercise equipment that is out of the project contingency. So there's right now about $84,000, and this will be $50,000 out of that. We are uh, two weeks away from completion of the, the facility as we know it right now, and we're very comfortable with authorizing this expenditure. Ed, before we move on, just one question. Does this take into consideration the extra equipment or, or adding the extra, like the extra equipment that we did for Health and Wellness Center number one? Uh, yes, it's. So it, 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 we it, won't have to go back and redo it again, but this takes into consideration how useful that was and adds pictures. Right, we're trying to get them to, to where they need to be. Okay. And again, I want to emphasize this is out of the project contingency that's, that's there. This is not new money. And this also comes with the approval from the subcommittee. And this was the type of equipment that was anticipated originally in the bids. It was, but it wasn't included in there. Yeah, it's, it's barbells and right. kettlebells and, and weights and things like that. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the purchase of this equipment. Is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It is adopted. Item 10, David. <clears throat> Item 10 is recommend resolution approving change order number 12, MAPS 3 Senior Health and Wellness Center. Number 2, increase of $444,571 to be funded with program contingency funds, <clears throat> MAPS, or Project M3-H003. We've been given a, a revised uh, resolution, and after lengthy discussion on this item, um, the subcommittee decided that there were three items that were not originally uh, bid alternates from the project and that w we would fund them through the, the project contingency, and that's about $11,000, and, and we have that money. Uh, but then there is an, an ask for additional money for the other items. George Marquez is here today to go through a, a quick presentation to show you what these items are, and I'd like to invite him up. Morning. I'm George Marquez, project manager for uh, FSB. Uh, this presentation is for the additional items on uh, change order number 12. Uh, the first item is uh, being uh, under underground conduit for uh, future security <coughs> cameras. Uh, now this only provides an empty conduit so that when the operator moves in, they have the ability to add security cameras to two of the light poles in the parking lot. Item number two are six additional aluminum benches in the group exercise spaces, which would basically be three on each end so that patrons can put down, you know, any fitness equipment or if they want to just kind of sit down and take a breather. Item number three is a collapsible divider wall in the multi-purpose room. Uh, the building and structure itself has the structure for it already. All it needs is the um, divider wall to be installed, and this would separate the room into two separate spaces for patron use. Item number four uh, would be industrial ceiling fans in the exercise room. Uh, this will just help move the air around in that room to make it uh, more comfortable. 
Item number five is exterior fencing on the south side of the building. So it will enclose a space behind the building, you know, for extra security and keep, you know, people from just wandering in from the outside into the building on the, through the back. Item number six are exterior site furnishings, which consist of uh, benches, trash cans, and bike racks. These are all located on the north side of the building near the clinic entrance and the main entrance. Item number seven are furniture, fixtures, and equipment for the arts and crafts area. That includes, you know, movable tables, podiums, storage racks, uh, kiln table, uh, chairs, projector, and, you know, just clocks, additional accessories for those rooms. Item number eight is additional furniture for the administrative offices that are along the north side of the building. Uh, that includes, you know, computer desks, uh, chairs, guest chairs, and uh, conference room furniture. And uh, item number nine would be the large entry canopy located near the main entrance of the building. So the total for all nine items would come out to 444,571, which would be an increase of approximately 4.2% over the original contract amount. Questions for George? I, I would like to say a few words if it's, if Absolutely. it's appropriate at this time, Tom. Um, I, I, I support this, um, but I think it's important to, to, to explain this in, in context. Um, as you all know, um, um, I did not support the, the supplemental request from Wellness Center number one for I forgot what that number is, about $150,000. The committee, uh, the wellness committee, voted to bring that on to this board. I did not support that um, at the committee level, um, but I supported it because the committee supported it. Yes. And the reason I, I think that's important to note is because it is, again, based on, an, 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 and we talked about this at the last meeting, my, my, my beliefs that I wanted to not give any money to any other subcommittee until we bid all of our projects and we just see how much money was left. But, but as we know, we have since, since then, because um, um, the, the contingency fund through uh, extra taxes and interest uh, was is pretty significant, as we all know. Um, and so I do support this because, because we have, again, voted to use some of these monies for other projects. Um, and with the staff recommendation on this particular uh, project, um, I support it as well. But I think I thought it was important that people understand where I'm coming from, sure. and, 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 and I think that's important. But I just want you all to know that. Does that make sense? Yes. Anyone else? Yeah, because it's staff Were these originally at alternates? Yes. George, I have a question for, oh, I'm sorry, Kim. I just had one question on item number nine on the large entry yes. canopy. Isn't it unusual to use polycarbonate as a substrate on something that would be exposed to the heat, extreme temperatures, hail? It, it is a durable product, and it's usually used on various projects. Um, it, it's not unusual to use that type of product on a project. It's rated for that. It's a it's a thick product. It's not just a thin sheet. Right. George, were these some of these things so expected that I'm surprised that uh, we're coming in here now for trash cans and administrative chairs and stuff like that? Were those not so? These are ad alternates, or why are we just thinking of this? They were alternates but were not, um, those options were not taken at the time that the contract was awarded to the contractor. Now out of all of the nine items that we went through, items one, two, and four 
were the only add-ons. The rest of the items, 2, 3, and 5 through 9, were alternates that were a part of the contract documents. But like I said, were not awarded at the time that the contract was awarded to the contractor. The bids came in such that we couldn't include these items. Is that what I'm understanding? <clears throat> That's right. And, and they were in the original plans. And, and beyond that, the operator is providing a, a, a large amount of, of furniture for the clinic. And they're bringing that in. And there was so much furniture and stuff. Some of this stuff, I'll just tell you, got lost in the mix. There's a few items that we didn't include in, in the project. But to, to reiterate, items one, one, two, and four are the ones that are new. They weren't originally alternates, and that's what the ones that the subcommittee has um, suggested and, and approved to be paid for through the project contingency. So that reduces the amount of, of program contingency that we need to ask for. So you're changing the 444 to 433 or something? That's right. Yeah. And then the canopy, we have, we have a canopy at Senior Wellness Center number one, do we not? We do, and if you recall also, we did a change order to do the footings for this canopy in anticipation that sometime in the future we could do it and, and ease of construction because there's, there's so much up there, it's hard to get a drill truck up in there after the, the sidewalks are poured and the plantings are done. So we have the footings there. Um, Hoping that someday we could add this this canopy, and and now's the time that we're asking for that. I feel I feel that you know uh, these things are probably needed. Certainly, they were in the original design and stuff. I still have hesitancy over the way we're funding these things because I still feel that we ought to deal with these things within the projects, and 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 then gather our wants and needs from all of the projects and come back in and divvy up our excess funds. I'm, I'm, I fear that as we chip away and give out these excess funds along the way, at some point we're going to look back and say, well, gee, it would really be nice to do a fifth wellness center, or it would really be nice to do some more miles of sidewalks or something. And I wish, you know, we'd considered that. And I know a, a year ago we asked about trying to gather up, you know, all those sort of wants and needs so we'd have them before us and, and be able to kind of evaluate those. And so, I mean, I, I, I think the things are necessary. I'd rather just see them dealt with within the senior wellness committee, even if it means borrowing from future phases right now, and we've done that in other committees, other, other projects, you know, when we come up with funding issues, we first borrowed from future phases and dealt with those, and then came, before we ultimately came back, I think in, in some cases, before we came back and asked for program money. And so, in that regard, I mean, I'm okay with the list of items, I, I'm not okay, I guess, with the method of funding. Michael, I'm going to give you the first opportunity to answer well, this. I, again, Michael, I agree with you, and that has been my position, but, but we have gone ahead and funded some, a couple of major things from that contingent fund because of its size, and it's because of that uh, uh, that it makes sense to me that this is important enough that this also be considered in that, in that spirit. Uh, uh, that those are, as you know, I, I, without repeating myself, I was with you, but we, we, we didn't do that. We decided to do this because of the size of the contingency. Uh, that was the argument. And so with that, and that spirit is why I think this is a good idea. Well, it, it seems like what we're, what we're drifting is, you know, in the end, you know, whatever projects, the last two or three projects we've got are going to end up with whatever excess money there is. And I think there's, you know, I think we ought to be considering, you know, even projects, the fairgrounds or the river or some of these other projects that worked within their budget and did their things, I mean, they're entitled to some of the excess funds as well. I think that's I just, certainly, you know, I just, I'm afraid it's, going to, it's all going to trickle away and be, end up allocated out to the ones that, you know, are, they keep designing up and, and doing things that outside their budget and come to the program wanting the money, and, and I just I don't think it's a fair way yeah. of doing it. One of the things that we've talked about is, is waiting to see where we are, make sure we get to the 777. We've roughly got two weeks left in collections. And we should know here in the next month, once we get the checks or, or six weeks, of exactly where we are. And I anticipate doing just what you're talking about is, is meeting with the subcommittees and start to put together those lists. Um, I just wonder if, if it could be basically an accounting procedure of whenever we go through that of reminding the different subcommittees what they've gotten in the past. You know, the sidewalk's got an extra nine million and the the park got a little bit and the streetcar's gotten a little bit. We can do that accounting. So equally at the end, we could show that 
that the wellness centers got some early on and that would be in their column, so to speak. Yep. Uh, right now we have about 28.9 million in projected revenues. Um, Kim? Two, three things I look at. I respect all of, all of the comments that everybody's made today because they're, they're warranted to listen to. The challenge that I see with this center right here is these are not things that they're asking to upgrade. They're not asking to put travertine on the floors. They're not asking to have, you know, 56 inch TVs in every single area. They're not asking for things that are upgrades to what they have. I, I look at these things and see you could not operate or open that center and run that center without these things. And again, I, I don't have it. I agree with the list. I don't have any problem with that. My only objection is whether it should be funded within from their budget right now and then we'll deal with it later when we do, rather than giving program money now. That's and, my only issue. And I see that we have lessons learned. We've never had a senior health and wellness center in the city of Oklahoma City. So when we anticipated how many we were going to have and what the budget was going to be, it, it was best guess. So we built the first one and we learned there were some things we needed to add to that one. Now we're into the second one and we're learning these other things need to be in there. If we know that we're already at this cost for one, and we're at a very similar cost for two, then that's what we need to anticipate that three and four are going to cost. And I think if we don't fund these things that are base things, we're also telling the next potential operator for three that, well, we, we may give you a pretty good start, but we're not sure if we're going to give you everything you need to open. So, so this center is scheduled to open in April of 2019? I think now, how many, how many uh, 60 days? Extra. Well, they're on schedule now to, to be complete about mid-January if, if we don't add these things. It, then it will push it to April, but that's just because of the time it takes to order steel and, and that kind of stuff. I'm sorry, getting ahead a year. So, so that means for 90 days this center will set without being able to really open, function, and operate. Well, there's a period when uh, North Carolina will have to, to move in and start their startups so they can still do that and and we've even had discussions that maybe they could do soft opening and use the the clinic door to come in and not come in through the door where the awning is being placed there's things we can work around to, to maybe keep this from being delayed so long i'm just not sure it's the message we want to send to the citizens it's it's four per four point two four percent over that's that's a really small drop in the bucket um because I think when number three comes along, we're going to realize that we're probably going to be in the same cost arena. So, so let's face that now and, and moving forward. And then in reality, we, we know what we have to allocate. Maybe the cost of building one through four is all we're going to be able to do with this budget that we have. But hopefully there's a MAPS four and a MAPS five and a MAPS six. And if we get successful operators in one, two, three, and four, <clears throat> the citizens are going to be more likely to say, hey, this is a great way to spend our pennies um, and move forward. So. That's all I have to say. Sue? I um, just want to say that uh, I think it's important that we get it right. And uh, we've been coming back. We've been adding some needed things at the fairgrounds, at Senior Wellness Center one, number one. As we're building <coughs> these projects, we have to get it right, because this is MAPS 3. So um, I tell a lot of people on a daily basis, fair does not mean equal. So I, I support all of my colleagues here. I, we're never going to be finished with our want lists. We know that. And we've got some huge projects at the end. <laughs> so. Um, that's just the way that's going to be. But um, as the chair of a committee and the vice chair of another committee, I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying, and I think it's green light now for let's develop some of those uh, lists that, because we have met the benchmark on um, getting our funding. So we know we're at 777 now, right? I saw that on the budget report today. Yes. I'm surprised we didn't all over that one. Anyway, 
So, you know, let's, let's do what Mike said and let's kind of develop some of those lists. And as committees, we're going to reprioritize those anyway. But um, I'm comfortable with things coming to us when they have come. I, I don't want us to look back at one moment, say, woulda, shoulda, because this is could and would in this committee. So I don't know if we've done a first or a second, but I'll put a second in. Yeah, I, I, oh. I was going to move it. I was waiting. You move it. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 Your committee. All right. You moved it. Sue I'll second, second it. it. And Bob is the first to speak on the discussion of the motion. Bob? Well, I agree with everything that everybody has said. Uh, let, me, let me explain because it may not seem consistent. Um, I, I share the view of most of us uh, on this panel months ago when we were talking about being cautious uh, about spending program uh, contingent funds. Uh, and I, I don't disagree with what Mike and Mike have, have said today. I think we still need to be uh, very cautious uh, about that. But I agree with Kim in the sense that there is a difference, sometimes a very fine line, between doing something that is really an extra on some committee's bucket list that they would, would like to do and something that is fairly essential to the immediate operation of the project we're, we're working on. Like I said, it may be difficult sometimes to draw that line and figure out which category you're in, but I, I sense that the items in uh, Change Order 12 are essentially in that first thing, like Kim was discussing, that we really need to do this now to make Wellness Center 2 functional and, and effective and draw the people we want uh, to, to be members there and utilize the, the facility. Yes, we run some risk we're down that slippery slope of getting into program contingency monies, but as long as we exercise some discretion and, and try to categorize is this something we essentially need now or is this a bucket list item that, that we'd like to have but don't really need, I, I think we're okay. And I'm okay in approving this particular change order because I put these in the first category. We really need these to get Wellness Center 2 up and running and, and underway and it's it's a wise expenditure even though we are dipping very slightly into uh, program funds. And I do take comfort that it looks like our numbers are going to be, I don't know, 20, 30 million beyond what our original projections were. So uh, we can probably find a few pennies, relatively speaking, out of that money to, uh, to do the, the items on the change order. Anyone else? Well, I want to just say again, my, my position is not against any of these items. I think these all need to be done. It's, it's just yeah. on the kind of the accounting for it and the process for it. And, and I, I, I couldn't agree. I think Mike's made a good point, and I think we all think that Mike is making a good point, and we all want to be cognizant of that. I do want to just add this, Mike. There are a couple of factors that we have always taken into account. One is timing mattered and the amount of money matters. And so here, the amount of money isn't going to probably change any big decision in the future. It may change our principle or something, but it is not that amount of money is not inordinate for us. And the timing. So when we have both the timing and an affordable item, it seems like an okay thing to me to go ahead and do. And so I, I support it as well, even though I concede your point. All right. Is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Record, record Mike Adams as, as no. And with that, uh, it has been approved. Let's go to item 11, David. Item 11 is recommend resolution approving change order number 10 and amendment number 12, maps 3 trail improvements, phase 2, project 1, I-44 West, Will Rogers Trail, increase of $86,629.65, project M3-T002A. <coughs> Um, these next items are for the uh, Will Rogers Trail, which is under construction and, and getting real close to being complete. And as we work on these projects, we come in to items that um, are unknown or things in the field that need to be changed. So that this on the change order shows a waterline modification for $4,100. 
junction box and trail repairs of $8,400, and then there's a no-cost time extension for these items. <clears throat> and then um, I have staff always keep up to date with our quantities on the amendment side of it. So as we use more and use less, we keep that uh, accounting square on that. So you will see that on the amendment side, there's some asphalt replacement, there's some retaining wall, there's some uh, additional trees that we needed to plant. Um, adjustments on valve, valve box, pull box, manholes, some additional curb and gutter, sidewalk, additional asphalt, and then one of the, the bigger things on this <clears throat> was item seven, and that came as from a request from the subcommittee to add some cable barrier. They're on Northwest Expressway from Portland. As you go west down to that little creek that's in there, the trail gets really close to the street. We had some uh, cable barrier there close to Portland, but they asked that we extend it all the way down to the creek to give a uh, better safety situation in that area. So that's that's the largest piece of this change order. Um, it comes with the uh, recommendation from those that were in attendance yesterday. Item 12 is a recommended resolution approving change order number 9 and amendment number 11, <clears throat> MAPS 3 Trail Improvements Phase 2, Project 2, I-44 West, Will Rogers Trail, increase of $13,688, Project M3-T002. <clears throat> so uh, again, this is Will Rogers Trail. There's a no-cost time extension as far as the change order um, because there was some additional work that took longer and and we run into utilities and things like that that take longer hold the contractor up and then again quantity revisions of thirteen thousand six hundred and eighty eight dollars and this also comes with the recommendation of those that were in attendance move approval no i have a, a point of um clarification on item 10 so just after this vote I could. Okay. Are there, we're on item, we're on item uh, 12. Uh, are there questions or is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. Oh, we voted. It has been adopted. All right. We're going to call on Amanda, our legal counsel, who's going to give us a point of clarification about item number 10. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just for purposes of the record for the minutes, I'm just clarifying that the motion that was made and that was voted upon was the amended resolution that was presented to this board um, for item number 10. <clears throat> right. It, it just it clarifies the um, actually funding sources, and that's that was the new resolution that was presented. So I just wanted to clarify for purposes of the minutes that that was what was actually moved, unless there's. Um, I'm not sure who made the motion. No, no. So you, let's see, it is the distinction you're trying to draw where whether it's coming from the project or the program contingency? Right. There was a, a amended <clears throat> resolution that was passed out at the time that the item was um, yes. discussed. So I just need to clarify with Mr. Dover that that was his motion for the purposes of the minutes. We we do believe, Mike, that it is that what you moved to approve what Amanda just said. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dover. Yes. Lisa, we good on that? We understand. Thank you, Amanda. All right. So we we know what we voted on on item 10, and it is it has been approved. We have already acted. But you know, if, if y'all read the paper today, it, 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 we didn't even have to meet today because the paper said that uh, this was going on to the city council. I don't know if you caught that. <laughs> I, I was busy looking at the story about the thunder wind. I didn't read that, so I didn't. All right, that brings us to, that brings us to item 13, then. Uh, item 13 is recommend resolution approving change order number three and amendment number five, MAPS 3 trail improvements, project two, I'm sorry, phase two, project three, I-44 West, Will Rogers Trail, increase of $120,178.56, project M3-T002B. Some additional drainage flume 
that uh, needs to be constructed on the upstream side of the trail right there at the detention pond near the or at the fairgrounds <clears throat> um, sheet drainage is coming across there and causing some erosion we'd like to capture that and get into into some storm sewer and then there's a mow strip and what a mow strip is is a strip of concrete where the grass can't grow and get up into the fence and make it difficult to trim <clears throat> then amendment five <clears throat> add some fence panel it's it's called panel, but it's really that wrought iron looking gate fence type in there. <clears throat> so that's to extend that uh, further west to prevent uh, vehicular traffic on the trail. <clears throat> so this also comes with the recommendation from those present at the subcommittee meeting. We moved and seconded that we approve it. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. It is adopted. Item 14, David. <clears throat> Item 14 is recommend resolution approving amendment number five, maps three, phase three, project one, sidewalk improvements, a decrease of $247,891.51, accepting the project and placing the maintenance bond into effect, project M3 W003. <clears throat> I like accepting projects. This one is, is complete. We're proud that we finished these sidewalks. And then as the final reconciliation of the quantities occurs, there is a savings of $247,891.51. So this also comes with a recommendation from those present. <laughs> Does anyone want to merrily second it? <laughs> All right. It's been joyously moved and merrily seconded that we approve this decrease in uh, what we thought we were going to spend. Is there further discussion? All in favor? Oh, Bob. Just, just a comment. I, I assume your bucket list has increased by $247,000 then. This is one mile of sidewalk. There'll be an additional mile of base board. Oh, great. All right, then. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Item 15, David. Uh, item 15 is recommend resolution approving amendment number two, maps three, phase four, project one, sidewalk improvements, increase of $6,855, project M3-W004. Again, quantity revisions during construction for a sidewalk project. And moved and second that we approve this amendment. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It's approved. Item 16, David. <clears throat> Item 16 is recommend resolution approving change order number nine, maps three streetcar storage and maintenance facility, increase of $31,639, approving maintenance bond numbers one and two, approving partial acceptance and placing maintenance bond number one into effect, project M3-S006. So this is a partial acceptance of the maintenance facility. And the reason it's partial acceptance is we need to get the contractor <clears throat> cleared and get him paid. They have completed everything that, that is uh, available for them to do. Part of the contract stated that the owner, the city, would provide some equipment and they would install it. That equipment has not arrived yet, and that equipment is shelves, shelves for the spare parts that go in the storage room. <clears throat> so we split this up, and we have a bond for the billing itself, and then we have um, a bond for that other piece. So whenever we get the shelves and they get those installed and they've finished everything they're contractually obligated to do, we will bring that to you again as a final, final acceptance on it. <clears throat> but right now we have partial acceptance for the billing that's been complete and uh, a change order for $31,639. You have a revised resolution that was handed out to you. So if you choose to move this, you'll be moving on the revised resolution. As far as the change orders, uh, um, these are things that we just need to button up as we finish the building. They're, they're relatively small items. There's security, uh, card reader and security. There's an additional steel angle that was placed. There's some uh, stone revisions on the exterior. There's a, a Knox box, which is a box that the fire department uses in order to get access. Some additional electrical equipment. Um, there was some embark requests for some safety striping and signage, elevator modifications. Um, you know, as I said, just just small things to to finish this project up. But I'm very pleased with the way the project looks. Um, it is it is a really nice building. 
this comes with the recommendation from those that were present at the uh, streetcar subcommittee. Been moved and seconded that we approve this change order. Some oh. further discussion? And the revised resolution. And, and the revised resolution that's been handed out. So we're voting on the revised resolution. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It is approved. Item 17, David. Uh, item 17 is recommend resolution approving change order number six. And amendment number five, MAPS 3 Modern Streetcar Mainline, increase of $401,976.31, project M3-S007. Big project that um, I know you've seen on the, on the street. We've got a lot going on. We've got construction still going on in Bricktown. We've got it in the Central uh, Business District, and we've got it in, in Midtown. So there's a lot of things going on. Um, one of the biggest items is item three, and that was... Um, an add of $91,000 for some utility relocations. And if you'll recall, we added on what we call the Fifth Street Turnback. It's a secondary loop that would allow the streetcar to, to turn sooner if, let's say, there's an accident or, or something that prevents them from going all the way up into Midtown. They're able to, to turn there on Fifth Street. So this was something that was added and additional utilities that needed to be relocated for that, uh, that work. And you'll see that there's some credits on here also from the, the pylon. The pylon is the sign that, that is at the stops. <clears throat> there's some fescue sod that we um, added. <clears throat> some temporary traffic signals that we uh, had to put up. Again, just usual construction things. Item 10 is some additional um, electric com electrical components $28,000 on that. What we, uh, we hope to be able to do is have enough money in our project contingency to purchase a generator that would help with backing up the operations of the streetcar. These parts, these components help us get to that point. Um, we had some soil instability where we were drilling catenary foundations. That's $9,000. Um, uh, slip dowels is item 13. That's the dowels that, that go on the in the slab of the concrete as you're pouring new concrete to them so it ties them together and, and minimizes the amount of, of sediment that they'll have. And what those can do, if you're not careful with how you put those in, is they can cause cracking to reflect into the existing <clears throat> paving. So we um, conferred with, with Public Works and the field services and, and it came to the conclusion that adding these additional dowels will help reduce the amount of pavement cracking that could happen. Uh, for this project. Then the other uh, item, <clears throat> some temporary paving. If you've driven along the, the alignment, you'll see that where the switches are supposed to go, there's been some, some rail that was just sticking out there and was left open um, because of the schedule of, of the switches showing up. We uh, chose to go ahead and patch those and cover them temporarily, especially for the holidays because it was getting very difficult to get around downtown. with between our construction and Project 180 construction and the private construction that's going on, we needed to get some relief. So we have patched uh, those areas. And, and again, unknown utilities um, around 5th Street is an, another uh, item two on the amendment. So it's a, it's a fairly healthy um, amendment and change order, but we've gone through it all. We've got people in the field every day watching these. As you can see, we, we are getting Credits, even like item nine, six hundred and fifteen dollars. We're watching every penny that we can on the project. So I know I've talked way too long about that, but um, this comes recommended from those that were in attendance from the streetcar meeting. David, I had a, a comment. You had a backup generator in here. Just a little point of personal note. I was in Atlanta last weekend. Mm -hmm and their electricity went out due to a fire. And part of their problem, apparently, was their backup generator was in the same area as their main system. So when they had the fire, they really had no redundant system because both went out. So I hope our backup generators are uh, yeah. somewhere I'm, where they won't be affected by the same We're looking at siting that generator by the, the maintenance facility. So if, if we lose og &E power and cars are stranded there, that we can use that generator to power the system. Yeah. It was just 
Good point. Interesting comment that they had that, that, that both their backup system and, and main system were in the same facility. So, good planning. All right. It, we didn't have um, quorum, but we did uh, discuss this, and, uh, and obviously the biggest items related to the, the Fifth Street turnaround, um, which we view as. You know, now that we're seeing how the costs are, are, are lining up, we feel more comfortable doing that now rather than later, because if you do it later, so you're going to have to disrupt the system. Um, and then, of course, the temporary pavers is just a, something that, that can't be avoided, as, as David mentioned. Um, the one big credit was uh, you see the $64,000 that's actually related to removing a screen. So instead of having two screens on the pylon, you'll have one. The screen will have information about um, you know, the route and, and um, there will also be as just a static information will be displayed. So in case the screen's out or in case you don't want to use the screen. Uh, there was some concern over, you know, we really want to have as much information, user-friendly information as possible. So we, we really, uh, you know, stressed, um, you know, to Embark, because obviously they'll be the one operating it, the importance to have a very visible pylon. That's the structure that, that the screen will be on. It'll be like 14 feet tall, hopefully very well lit. And, uh, but if there is a need later on to add that screen back, um, there'll be the ability to do that. But I wanted to pass that um, that conversation on for the benefit of the group. Um, but with that, I move approval. All right. It's been moved and seconded. We approve this resolution. Is there further discussion? Bob. Uh, just one question on uh, item one on the amendment, the temporary paving. If that was a result of the manufacturer's delay, is there any way of recovering any of that money from the manufacturer? We're looking into that. Okay. Sir, I'm, I'm working with... <laughs> Uh, municipal Council's office and determining what our options are. Okay, thank you. Further, further questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It's approved. Item 18, David. Item 18 is recommended resolution authorizing use of excess construction funds in an amount not to exceed 360000 to purchase computer shop and storage equipment, MAPS 3 Modern Streetcar Mainline Project M3-S006. This is really just a recharacterization of the usage of the money. Um, originally, some of, of this money was to be used to buy some software, but that software has been included in the, in the mainline construction. Uh, so within the in the project, we are moving things around, but since we did receive excess um, money at one point, I'm bringing it to you to authorize that we recharacterize this and use it for computers and, and some other equipment. It's been moved and seconded that we approve this resolution. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It is approved. Item 19, <coughs> any, uh, any member of the board or the staff have any new business to bring before? All right, then we'll move to item 20, uh, subcommittee reports. Any sub We've heard from most subcommittees today. Anything else? All right, then. You have in item 21 several information items that uh, David, or two information items that David has furnished. Questions about those information items? All right. They'll be accepted as presented. That brings us then to uh, our overall update from David. Item we talk, we've talked about a lot of the, the projects. I can tell you that the additional work at the river is ongoing. And hope to have that wrapped up in 60 to 90 days. Senior Wellness, we, we discussed that at length. But Wellness Center 2 is, is coming together well. Uh, Trails and Sidewalks has a lot going on, still building sidewalks. And then Will Rogers Trail, and we expect bids on the Draper Trail in January. Convention Center final design is underway. Um, park construction, if you go down there, they've got hundreds of people down there working. It, it's, it's going well. I'm uh, really excited about seeing that. And then the subcommittee saw some, some preliminary design work on the lower park this month, so we are uh, working on that. And then streetcar. Uh, streetcar is uh, going gangbusters, especially in Midtown right now. And, and I just want to say I thank everybody who's working with us, and we're doing our best to try and keep everybody informed as to what's going on with that. I know it's, it's painful, but we're moving as fast as we can, and, and uh, it will be all good when it's done. That's it. 
I would just like to add to that on the streetcar. We received a presentation on the status of the car construction at, uh, what is it, uh, what's the company? Brookville. And car one is complete and is awaiting its final testing. Um, we have a delivery schedule set up. and It's really going great. It's just great. Okay, then that brings us to item 23. Any other comments by members of the board? I have one. I have a question. So when, how will streetcar number one be delivered? Well, there's actually, I'll see if I get it right and then David can correct my paper. Um, there's actually a special company that, that's, that's what they do. That's all they do is deliver streetcars. What was the name of the company? Silk Road. Silk Road. Um, but it, it's, it's, it comes in on a truck. I mean, like, how, like physically, how is it delivered? I mean, it comes in on a on a trailer, one of those like 18 axle trailers, very low to the ground, <clears throat> and uh, then they it, it takes them a couple hours just to offload it onto the track. They'll essentially just load it off the trailer and onto the, the track. So I need all you guys to show up because we got to pick it up and put it onto the. <laughs> <laughs> well. I just feel like we should have a welcome party oh, we're, of some sort. We're working on that, and, and from what we've been told, we won't have to do much work because people will show up. Right. Yeah. So I really want the public to know when that happens. Thank you. In, in addition to that, the, the truck turns around, runs right back up, and gets the next car, and, and they'll be bringing the next one down, one right after the other. Oh. If you want to uh, keep track of that, you can always check the MAPS 3 Twitter account and Facebook account. Our uh, public information people do a great job of keeping everybody up to speed there. Well, you know, there are like Santa trackers, so it'd be nice to have um, a streetcar tracker. Well, we kind of already are working on it. a little that. Yeah. countdown kind of thing. Okay. I have a comment. Happy Hi. holidays. Great. Wish everybody Happy holidays. Good holidays. Anyone else? Well, uh, I, I too want to say thank you to all of you, uh, to David and his staff, to Mike and, and our great consultants at ADG, and each one of you. It's been uh, another year when I want to note for the record that we have always had a quorum for this meeting, and we have now been meeting since May of 2010. And I congratulate all of you for the uh, for putting it, uh, giving it a priority status. And it's been this has been a long road. We've completed a very uh, productive year, but we've got a very exciting year coming ahead. As you heard David talk about what's going to happen at the park and for the convention center as we finish up the streetcar, and, and then as we fulfill Mike Adams' Christmas wish, we'll begin to think about what we're going to do with the rest of the money. If we have a little left, Mike, and so it will be uh, it'll be an exciting year indeed, and I really look forward to spending it with with you guys. So happy holidays for me as well. All right, anything additional from the staff, David? No, sir. Uh, any any citizens here that want to be heard? All right, thank you. We we have has been moved by Sue and seconded by Michael Adams that we adjourn. All in favor, say Merry Christmas. All right, all right, we're adjourned. <laughs>